Hey guys, it's Lady Grave Dancer, and I'm here with Miss Wednesday. I said your name this time for you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I have a song. I have a song. Oh God, no. I have a thing. No. I have to. Sing it. I have to. Suppress it. So, I said what? What? In the butt? You want to put it in my butt? In my butt? <laughs> I said what? What? In the butt? You want to put it in my what? In my butt? Okay. Wow, that's an intro. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. supposed to talk about but it ended up there yes well yeah <laughs> so last night was a very interesting night you know we didn't get a chance to put out our video for sunday or whatever and um i decided to listen <laughs> to listen to a guided meditation to go to sleep and it's like three hours long mm-hmm. so i have the little bluetooth wireless bluetooth headphones so i i put it i put the, the guided meditation on my tablet I put the headphones on my ear and I laid down. So it was really interesting. I I guess I was dozing off. I don't know. But it was relaxing. And I'm like, okay, this is working. This is working. And out of the blue, this motherfucker started talking about and educating us on whales. Really? And I was like, yeah. It was like he was just talking about, yeah, so you know whales. And I was like, excuse me, sir. He got off the topic of. I don't know what the fuck was going on but it went left real quick and I guess my brain must have liked it still because I ended up going to sleep but it fucked my dreams up because I had a dream that I robbed a bank what? and <laughs> how do you rob a bank from talking about wells? I don't know but I had a dream that I robbed a bank and the person that was driving the getaway car his head was shaped like the boo boo emoji. What? Yeah. So no more guided meditations for me. I don't think that had anything to do with your guided meditation. I'm positive that it did. I think it had to do with the spell that you did the other night to get the money that you needed. Is that why I robbed the bank with shithead? No. I don't know about the shithead part, but Yeah, like I was the I'm finding I'm on money most wanted list right now. In my dream, I'm scared to go to sleep tonight. They might catch me. Jeez, that's interesting. So, yeah, that was my first experience with guided meditations, whales, shitheads, and America's Most Wanted. Wow, that's mm-hmm. that's great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's very yeah, interesting. I I, you were about to get into the topic um, on the last video on sigils. Oh, sigil magic. <clears throat> So it's it's kind of hard to talk about how to do sigil magic. It's, it's really more so for like a visual video. Yeah, that's but I true. will say that it's not for the faint of heart because a lot goes into it. It's very intricate. Well, it can be very intricate unless you know you you make it very simple. But I was doing some sigil magic the other day, and my magic drains me anyway. Yeah, but. It took a lot out of me to the point where after I was done doing my sigil magic and, you know, I sent it off into the universe, I I went to stand up and literally I toppled over. Like, I I just, I I had no energy. So, you have to be careful when doing sigil magic because it it really, it it takes a lot of energy and it just drains you. Now, that's something. You want to talk about life force. (laughs) That's something. They kind of, it really kind of tugs at you. Um, but I'll do a more, a, a more. I think you should because show. I don't see how that, I don't see how that type of topic could be covered in like a radio show. Yeah. Mm-mm. I really don't. You have to show how it's done. And there is a lot of videos. Well, I'm not going to say a lot of videos, but there are a few videos out there floating around YouTube that talk about sigil magic and how to activate them. Because I think it's the activation part that's, that's the, the, the draining portion of it. And then just drawing out those intricate details and figuring out what should go where you almost have to go into like a trance state and i I think y'all call it auto writing 
<laughs> y'all call it auto writing. <laughs> yeah, I think it's like a meditation that some of y'all out there doing where you just auto writing or something. I don't know. I don't know. Y'all now, sigil magic and symbol magic are not the same. It isn't? I thought it was. Well, not for me. Do explain. Well, because I have symbols that I have created through time. Through time. Mm-hmm. Like, I've been here 100 years, right? I have symbols mm-hmm. that I've well, used yeah. through <laughs> through time that don't take that much effort to use. So, I wouldn't mm-hmm. think that they would be the same. Well, yeah. And I guess, yeah, I can see that. Because with sigil magic, mm-hmm. the, the per- well, I'm not going to say the purpose, but one of the steps is to pretty much forget about it. You're never going to use it again. You see? If you have the same thing that you want to accomplish, you're going to create a, a completely different sigil. Then you're going to charge it, activate it, destroy it. You see? And I'm pretty sure with your symbols, you use them over and over again, right? Yes, yes. I have one that I created when I was like 14 that I still use mm-hmm. to this day. And yeah. I, I don't have them written anywhere. They're in my head. And I reuse yeah. them over and over again, but for the same type of magics. And they're different ones for different types of magics. All right. Well, I, I do a lot of angel letters, too. Like when I'm inscribing my name and things like that, or just in general, I write in angel letters instead of, you know our normal alphabet mm-hmm. do, you use the, a, do you use the um voodoo alphabet for anything no i think a, it's so I, pretty I, though uh-uh. um oh excuse me no i use the angel letters and i'll take a piece of chalk a white piece of chalk because you know most people except for in your house their walls are white <laughs> My ceilings are white <laughs> for now. <Yeah. laughs> I'll take a piece of white chalk and I'll I'll draw um, like uh, incantations and things like that on my walls and white chalk. Yeah, but like see, you remember when I was going through that all that drama with my apartment complex when I was living back in Florida and they were trying to take me to court. Yeah, and I I drew out my um my petition. And I'm like I wrote out my petition. On my door uh-huh. and white chalk. Yeah. Well, so I nobody use... else could see it. It was naked to the human eye. I knew it was there. And if you kind of stood in the right position, you can kind of see what is there. But you couldn't read it because it was an angel letter. Well, and it really worked. I use chalk, but I make my own chalk out of eggshells. How the hell? I know. I've been needing to do a video and showing how to do that. Because I, I'll mix it with, like, rosemary for protection or mistletoe mm-hmm. for paybacks bitch you know just different things but i yeah i use chalk as well just because my walls are darker doesn't mean i can't use it but i will also use the ash from sage or palo santo as well to write on the walls okay yeah yeah you write anything on your wall it's gonna be bright as day Mm -hmm. yeah that's why and and i'm really secretive about a lot of my workings too so if i can write something that 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 nobody's gonna understand i'm all for it Mm mm-hmm well, I don't yeah. have people uh, that really come over, so. Yeah. Unless I know they're coming. Mm. So you're you're really good with witches' rooms, right? And see, I can do. Yeah. Um, I can do like the runic rooms. I can't. I can't. Witches' rooms, I, I'm really good with, but no, I can't get it. So explain like how those how they work, because I'm I'm so lost on it. They look so. You know how I am with symbols and intricate. Stuff. Well, the symbols to me are, are so much simpler, I guess. I don't know. I guess people connect with different things. It just kind of like we connect with the cards and I connect with them and you just toss them out and, and you just read the ones that are popped over. The one closest to you is where you start and then you end with the one furthest away from you. Oh, okay. When you were saying voodoo letters, I just thought about you saying that. Are you talking about... uh? Uh, Veve. I don't know if that's what you call it, so I can't tell you. I'll text you a picture of what I'm talking about. Okay. Because if you are talking about a Veve, then yes, I do work with those. I will. Well, uh, you're on your phone, so I can't text it to you now, right? Yeah, you can text it to me. Okay, hold on. I'll do it now. But yeah, um, what were we just saying? Yeah, I, I'm really good with the witch's runes. I picked that up really quick. Trina started that mess. Mm-hmm. She got me my first set, and then whenever I flew back from California, they had went through my bag, and half of my runes didn't come back with me, and the other half were in the bottom of the bag, 
in my luggage. You know what? When I came back from Texas, those whole bags went through my shit, and that's how my Santissima um, statue got broke. See, that I just... I, I don't understand I, why they went... Well, I guess... Maybe because we have witchy stuff in it, and that the dog smelt something. I don't know. No, I've never had I my have, bags gone dog, through. No, because you know the x-ray, they see shit, and be like, what is that? I, I, ooh, I wish I would have had a snake in there that would jump out and bit one of those whole bitches. Ooh, what if you had, like, a dried-up snake in there when they did it? That would have been awesome. Mm-hmm. That's what the fuck y'all get. Yeah, I was mad. I was upset because that meant a lot to me. Not only because Trina gave it to me, you know, she put a lot of thought into it when she gave it to me. And I think her intuition told her I was going to pick it up so easily. And mm-hmm. I did. And I was really connected with them. And even when their paint started coming off, I would just repair them. Mm-hmm. And now it's like, what, you know, you jacked up my witch's runes. What's going on? I get I'll connected say what with I'm items. I'll say about that off camera, off, off video. Okay. And, but yeah, so airlines. I want a sourdough burger. <laughs> you want Jack in a Box? <laughs> yes! <laughs> Let me see. Ooh, me sourdough burger. Jack in a Box! Yeah! That's what I want. I'm so hungry. I'm Breakfast crazy. Jack. Oh, what do you think about, um, let's see, this one offering. I, think I should go to Jack in a Box. <laughs> I think you should go to, okay, you go to Jack in a Box when we're done. <laughs> Oh, Absolutely. what was the other one? You didn't want to go into hexes, right? Um, mm, nah. We can do it another day. Yeah. What about offerings at the graveyard? I, how I do it is I offer seven or nine pennies walking in and seven or nine pennies walking out. Mm-hmm. And I make sure that I kick my feet off when I leave. Because yeah. I don't want to, yeah, and I turn around three times. Yeah. And if I take anything at the graveyard, be it graveyard dirt or flowers or anything, I make sure that I leave an offering. And I'm, that's why I wanted to ask you. When you go to get your graveyard dirt, do you take it from a grave or near a grave? No, from the edges of the cemetery. Okay, yeah. Now, when I that's hit, when I hit I the family plots, if I hit the family plots, which none of them are real local, so that is rare, then, mm-hmm. you know, I will get it from them around them not from on top of them i just find it disrespectful i'm not saying that you can't or it's not the right thing to do in my mind it's disrespectful i just don't want to bring nothing back home because you know spirits i'm like a, I swear i'm like a beacon for spirits mm-hmm. so that's another reason why i do so much <laughs> like when i'm when i'm walking out of the cemetery when i get on the outside i swear i look like i'm being attacked by bees because i'm doing so much <laughs> like i'm spinning around i'm shaking i'm I don't want to bring nothing back home with me. That's how Junior so that's is. A, yeah. But see, I go I, I go so often to cemeteries, you know, especially mine, two that are my favorite over here, uh-huh. that I just go to leave stuff. Like, I don't always go to get things. I'll go to yeah. eat lunch. Uh-huh. You know? I just... Yeah, I, and I... I find that when I'm walking around the cemetery, like I go with, you know, whatever the reason that I'm going, sometimes I go to bury things. I will spend, like I'll go out there and do something so simple and I'll end up being out there for like an hour because I find myself walking around and I'm straightening up flower arrangements. Like if mm-hmm. somebody's flowers have fallen over, I, I almost turn into like a caretaker. <laughs> exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm sweeping off tombs, like headstones and, Yep. Turn and make sure your flowers are sitting on. I just have like a great amount of respect when I go into a graveyard. Yes, I do too. So do you do you think there's a difference between a graveyard and a cemetery? Mm, not that I ever thought of, no. Yeah, apparently there is. I didn't know that either. Well, damn. I never, yeah, I never really looked into it because I mean, whatever. Really? Um, hmm. Yeah. See, like I said, you learn something new every day. I'll have to look that up because. I don't see the difference. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's body buried in dirt. Maybe that but person is like a, a respect thing. Maybe they think graveyard is harsh. I don't, I don't know. I hope that's not his thoughts because that would really piss me off. <laughs> I mean, but I to each its own, I guess. Yeah, but yeah, I just have a, a great amount of respect when I go in. I leave offerings. Going yeah. in, I leave offerings. You know, I leave an offering. Basically, I pay to go in. Mm-hmm. Well, I, that's how I look at it. I'm paying to, to for entry, and I'm 
what I leave out, I'm, I'm giving an offering. I'm giving thanks. I'm giving gratitude. Yeah, I always pay on my way out. Yeah. If I know I'm going in for something, then I hear something. Hold on. What is that? I hear it, too. What the hell was that? It woke up my dog, too. Um, what was I saying? Oh, I always pay on my way out. And if I'm going in for a reason, then I take other things. I, I always hit up the liquor store and get those small bottles. And I usually always have at least a couple in my car or in my purse. But I'll go just to spend time there. But I always pay when I leave. Even if I don't take anything. If I'm just sitting there to relax. If I go there for lunch and I, you know, got some food and I'll share the food and eat my food and just chill. Uh-huh. I'm very at peace at the cemetery. Right. And I can't, if, I can't go into a cemetery if it has, like, that type of, like, different types of energies and things like that. I won't go in. I can literally feel it from the outside. I'd be like, oh, okay, so this one isn't for me. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, I go I go to bury stuff all the time. But I just, I couldn't, it's just not, and it's not my cup of tea to take from an actual grave. But I know a lot of people who do it, though. Yeah, I know when I did the video about finishing a spell at the cemetery and I had said don't take any off the grave and don't bury this on somebody's plot. Somebody else was like, well, you're always saying do what you want to do, you know, do what feels right, but yet you're telling us what to do. And I was like, no, I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I'm just, you know, my opinion is don't do it. (laughs) You know, don't do it. It just, it's rude. Yeah. Do what you want to do. That that's your. You gotta live with that, not me. Right. It's just. It, but it's it, it's rude. It's, a, it's it's disrespectful. It, in our opinion, I mean. Yeah. If if you're if like if you're on a family plot and it's your family member and they're okay with that, or if they're not your family member and you have you've able to get that connection and you're you've asked them if it's okay and they tell you it's okay or you feel like they told you it's okay, then I mean, do what you want to do. But mm-hmm. it's not. It's not. For, it's not my cup of. Not mine either. Yeah. So. And I, I don't, I rarely go to the graveyard to get dirt because I, I don't use it that often to where it doesn't last me. Like I have one that I've had for like two years. And I want to say this again. A little goes a long way with right. a lot of things. Mm-hmm. A little goes a long way. Let's see. Right. Like when you're using sulfur and stuff like that, you don't need and you don't, well. I got again, a video coming up tomorrow, y'all. Well. You'll hear this one after. So the video's already up on uh, Sulphur. Okay. Yeah, because this is, yeah, this is, we're pre-recording for this we're Sunday. We're pre-recording. So we don't, yeah, so we don't. We're not editing. We're pre-recording. Yeah, so we don't mess around and have the same thing that we had last last week. I guess I should say last week because I know you guys were pissed off last week. Like, where is the episode? And I know I'm like, all oh, those people who ride to work on Monday mornings listening to it. Like, we don't have it. We saw we. But, you know, I'm, I'm, like, reading, I'm reading down the list. I'm not ignoring you. <laughs> you are ignoring me. I'm no, just ignoring. I'm not. I'm not. I need to start marking some of these out because we've done so many of these. Uh, somebody asked, what are the favorite crystals and the energies we get from them? Hmm. That's you. You go ahead with that. You have favorite crystals, too. I mean, selenite. That's my favorite of all. It doesn't require cleansing. It cleanses itself. It's the softest of the crystals. And I love it. So that would have to be my favorite. I like lodestone and obsidian. Mm-hmm. Um, all of the rest of I have a, a literally like a cigar box full of crystals that I haven't looked at, seen, or touched in about a year. I sent you a selenite point. Yeah, now that I have. That's on my yoga table. Mm-hmm. It's it's very cleansing, that, and right? And I have my selenite wand that I use to direct energy. But other than that, like I have all types of crystals, and they just I don't know. I at one point I tried working with them, but they I just don't resonate with them. And a lot of crystals I can't I don't feel the vibrations from. I think that's why I like my obsidian and I like my lodestone because I put those in my hands and I can actually oh and my big ass rose quartz. I, what I think it is, I think I just don't do well with polished stones. It has to be the raw stone. See, I prefer raw stones too. Yeah, I think it's the tumbled stones because I have a like I said, I have a box full of tumbled stones, and I just I don't feel anything. I don't get not to say that it's not there. I mean, because it's a crystal, obviously the energy is there, but 
when it's tumbled, I feel like it's manipulated. I feel like it's diluted and and just I feel like it's kind of been what what's the word I'm looking for? Just I don't know. It just doesn't feel right to me. Mm-mm. Like it's been. I feel like the stone has been violated. <laughs> it's been violated. <laughs> yeah, like you have violated that stone's rights. <laughs> You know what other topic we were going to try to cover was um, sleep magic. Did we do that already? I, no, but that was you were because I, I wanted to hear you talk about. Whoa, no, I've never seen these tequila. I just got your text. Oh, yeah, I had found no, but those. I'm gonna start now. I have found those about two years ago because see, I got married and then I found it just before, and I've been trying to memorize them. And I'm pretty much got them down, but I don't want to start using them until I have them memorized. It's kind of like a respect thing, you know? Yeah, I don't want to I share just like this on it. YouTube. This is going to be one of the things I'm being stingy with. We can't share this on YouTube. Well, that's why I texted it to you. Okay, cool. <laughs> I don't, don't need no judgment that. passed because, you know, yeah. people are already saying that I do things I'm not supposed to do because I'm white. Fuck <laughs> it. <Stop> Let's <laughs> see. Um, I think I covered magic while we sleep with on um, grave uh, Graveyard. Which is you with Terry, and I shared a couple videos of some magics I've done while I, I sleep because I do think you can do magics while you sleep. I could. Don't be. Don't hate me, but I couldn't make it to that video. So you gotta... You're not required to watch all the videos. <laughs> I couldn't make it through it. I tried. I just. You know what's bad is when I'm reading my writing and I don't know what I wrote. What kind of. Huh? Okay. I, I'm not going to be able to figure that one out. It's too late tonight to figure out what I wrote right there. Let's right. see. What Did we talk about witching, witching on a whim? Have we done that? Yeah, that's when you was telling me to get out and hug a damn tree. And I told you, no, it's bugs on trees. Oh, I need to mark these things out. Because we've already yeah, talked about these. My locks itch. Just think about it. Let's see. Uh, do, 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 do. I'm looking. You ain't, you ain't got nothing to talk about over there? Oh, remember somebody asked because you had brought up about the wax melting a certain way. Uh-huh. And um, they were wanting to know if you can go in more detail about that, about the wax reading. Okay. So, you dress a candle, right? And uh, I'm trying to think of how else I can explain this. Say you're doing, you, you lit a taper candle. And you know, with a taper candle, the wax drains down. Okay? If it dra- if, if it flows to, say, the right side of the candle, if all the wax is flowing, once it hits whatever you have it sitting on top of, and you notice that it's all puddling to maybe the right side of the candle. Now, depending on your style of divination or how you read candles, it could mean one thing if it's if all the wax is starting to puddle to the right side of the candle. And maybe you don't like that meaning or you don't like that. You don't want that outcome. You want something different as far as the outcome because that's what magic is. It's a manipulation of energy. You're, you're doing magic to to get an outcome, to, to, to manifest an outcome. It's not like, oh, well, that's, if that's what, how it's, it's going, that's just how to, what, the way it's going to be. Then there's no sense that you do a magic man. Just, you just let nature run its course. So it's puddling and it's pulling all to the right hand side. You don't like that. You want it to. You want a different outcome. So that means that it needs to puddle to the left hand side. So what you would do is place something on the right hand side of the candle, which makes it impossible for the wax to puddle that way, and it has no choice but to go to the left hand side. That's you manipulating the energy. That's you manipulating your outcome. Which is the magic. Now, Which is the magic. would the right and left mean something different depending on the person? Depending on the person, yes. Yes. Because the way I read a candle, you may read completely different. I mm-hmm. may say, um, if it stops burning at this certain point, that's bad. You may say, oh, well, no, that's good. That means that it's done. The, the magic is done. The candle didn't have to burn completely out. Whereas I may feel like, no, the whole candle needs to burn in order for the magic to be done. If, if I, I may feel like if it doesn't burn completely out, then the spell will stop. So it's, it's, it's based on the practitioner. We spent an hour sending mes- text messages of pictures on wax the other night. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I, th- I think 
like you said, you had never really read the wax, right? No, I don't do a lot with the wax. The flame, yes. Um, now, depending on the flame and how fast the wax melts and starts dropping, there's some kind of a trance that I go in uh-huh. when the wax is really pouring, which is a hot mess, but it works for me. Uh-huh. And smoke and fire, I do, I do like to work with that, but not so much the um, like what you're talking about. But I find it very I interesting. Love, yeah, I love reading candles, the wax, and um, especially I think when you uh, the, the the seven day glass candles, you can write different, you know, whatever you want on different lines, like to section it off, burn the candle, and mm-hmm. read the residue on the glass. Yeah, I, I've seen people do that as well. Yeah. Um. So candle magic is it's, it's pretty interesting. It's it's a whole lot that goes into it, and, and I think I'm so good at reading the wax that I might try that whole wax water scrying thing. I you don't know. should. I really think that that would work out for you, but then again, I think everything is going to work out for you. <laughs> you know, I but I'm like the procrastinator though. So one day. One day. Okay, I'm gonna have to keep bugging you about that then. <laughs> <laughs> I have so much stuff on the back burner that I need to bring up and be like, listen, I have, that I have to address, but I just, I don't. We're doing very good right here with the request, but then again, I didn't go the last two days to see if there was any more requests. I'll go and look right now. You sing a song while I look. I gotta sing this time? You have to sing. I sung twice. But the only song that I know is Big Booty Hose. Big Booty Hose! Our Nicole song. Big hose. I like I big went. butts and I cannot lie. You other brothers can't deny. <laughs> okay, that's not the big blue hose song. That was <laughs> no. no, that's Nicole's song. That's the song I used to keep for her ringtone. Big butts and I cannot lie. Okay. You know, I spell out loud. That's okay. I understand. I'm going to add to the list to show how to make that chalk. Because with the eggshells. Uh-huh. Did we talk about that on this video, or was it the last video? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know. Well, I'm going to do a video on that. <laughs> I did a couple of videos today, too. Oh, um, talk about dreams and astral tra- astral travel during dreams. Astral. Yeah. yeah, I'm not, I'm not very, I'm not the one for that one. Me either. Me either. Sorry, guys. I'll find someone to come in on um, the witch's view to discuss that more. For sure. Okay. Okay, anybody who wants to come on the witch's view to discuss astral projection, please let me know. Okay. You got to have a Google Plus or Uvu account. Well, I says, could you talk about experience you've had in dreams and if they were negative what did you do about it and also why a negative entity might present itself to you or appear with bad intentions directed towards you break that down it it we're gonna have to listen um uh mr william is he trying to we're say have, if, like... We're going to have to address this in a different video because I'm going to have to have Tequila read this. It's a lot, but he really needs somebody to... Okay. Full, yeah. Like, screenshot it or something, and then we can get into I'm, that. I'm on my tablet. Oh, okay. Well, I'll go back and look. It was, what was yeah. it? I'll look down the William. List. I'll find William it. William Field. Okay. We'll find that one. So, we'll address it, William. Just not this video, um, but... Based on what everything that's going on, we're gonna have to spend some time on that one. Yeah. So we got you. Um, let's see. Okay, squirrels are evil tree rats. Yes. Stop. Y'all. Stop. Yes. Stop. Yes. <laughs> um, like we said on the last uh, video, that we are going to try to start sharing experiences on each video. Depending on the week. Hold on. Let me let a dog out. Come on, Rusko. You gotta go. Come on. Come on. Bye-bye. Their paws are more like tiny clawed hands. (laughs) Y'all have to stop. (laughs) They are. Um, So, yeah. We were going to start sharing an experience at the end of our video for our week. And since this video goes on my week this week, then I need to... See, and I shared an experience on last one. Now I gotta think. 
One says, can you go into depth about working with spirits? How to identify ones that mean well versus ones that don't. She says, I, oh, and to keep, I think this is good. This is a good one for you. So adding on to that, she says, can you go into depth about working with spirits? How to identify the ones that mean well versus the ones that don't. I recently learned that my son is seeing things that I cannot. And mm. I think you deal with that with Junior. So yeah. I think that's, that's more so directed towards you. You can really go into that and how you deal with it. Yeah, because Junior, my oldest son, he's very gifted. And he has always talked to spirits. Some good, some bad. The problem with him talking to spirits is that he leaves an opening for good and bad to come in. So I had learned pretty quick when he was younger that, unfortunately, his little friends... At one point, he actually even had, like, a little girl that he would play with pretty regular. And he actually had a little boy that was in a wheelchair. And it, it was just a great time for him. But unfortunately, because there was an opening, then uh, other things were coming in that were not so nice. So I would have to take his friends away from him. And that kind of goes into, like, the house cleansings that we do. We know how to fill out the energy and find the openings and close it back up and get rid of the spirits that are there. You feel the energy. You, If you tap into your energy, then you will be able to feel the good ones and the bad ones, and you'll know right away. And it may not work that fast right in the beginning, but you can. You'll know when it's bad. When we're just out and about and I see one, I know if they're good or bad. Like, oh, no, I don't like that. You just know. It's like you know when you're hungry. You know when something bad's going to happen. You I'm just hungry. know. Yeah, you, you want a sourdough jack. <laughs> mm-hmm. You just you got to tap into your energy. I did that video on energy bubbles just to try to help people to tap into their energy and then they could find other ways on feeling. You know, you got to learn how to feel because all the, there's energy everywhere. Mm-hmm. Everywhere. And you just got to start feeling it out and... and Start separating this energy is for that. This is that. Okay, I'm feeling this here. You know, it's it's kind of like even touch, you know, touch. You know, you're touching different things. It's hot. This is cold. It's the same thing with energy. You just got to learn how to know what is coming from where, if that makes any and sense. I, and I'm kind of a believer that if you're, if, if you can see a spirit, I feel like spirits are around because they're attracted to your energy. Mm-hmm. So that's the only, in my opinion, this is my opinion, that's the only reason that you can see them or that they allow you to see them is because they're, there's something about you that they're attracted to. They don't necessarily have to be a good entity. Um, and that's, a, that's another thing, like, sometimes you can't help what's attracted to you is based off your energy. So I believe that if you keep your energy kind of up and in good spirits, you'll that's the type of spirits that you'll keep around you. Because I'll notice that when, like, the, the icky stuff is around me or my not, because like I said, I feel like I'm a, a spirit beacon. Like, it, like they stay around me. Mm-hmm. But I notice that the not-so-nice ones are, are are around more so when I'm in a bad mood. It's like they feed off of that and they gravitate towards it. Because when I'm in a bad mood, I am in a bad mood. Everybody get the fuck out of my way. So... That's more so when I noticed that I have some of the ickies around. And see, that's the same for me. But with Junior, he's just, you know, now he's 20. He's going to be 21 now. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, when he was little, I had to keep that stuff away from him as much as possible. But him being older and out of school, and school was a really hard time, too. That kept me busy. Just the other day, you, you have to call and talk to him more about it. But I think it was last week. He called me and he's like, I feel something in the house. And he said, it doesn't feel good. And then he actually, cause you know, he sees them in full form, like me and you, like, like, a, person, like yeah. a person. And the guy was standing in front of the TV and then walked out the patio door. And then he had me on the phone and I'm, I'm like, junior, you can do this. You know how to do this, but I could come home real quick and take care of it if you want me to. And as I'm on the phone with him, I hear a bang and it, that thing, that him, whatever it was, slammed the um, doggy cage for Rusko, mm-hmm. slammed it closed, and, you know, he started freaking out. I was like, look, I can come home. It's not a problem. I can come home real quick. You, you know, it's not far. I don't work far from my house. Mm-hmm. And he and he's like, he waited a minute. He's like, no, I got this. 
And he took care of it. He's grown. He can take care of it now. He can have the ones he wants around him when he wants to and the ones that he don't. But he's he's always, he's open to, if he gave his gifts a chance. <laughs> Man, listen. Yeah. Cause, he is a supreme. <laughs> seriously. It's just, it's insane. But this is not the lifestyle that he wants. Right. So. And it's, it's understandable because sometimes it can be a, a bit taxing. And it's just like. You have so much just feeding off of you and just, and I, I truly believe that, that, that Junior is an empath. I really believe it. It's just not something that he's opened himself up to or something that he wants to admit out loud. He knows these things. Mm-hmm. He's just like, now nah, I'm cool with it. But that, um, and kind of staying on this topic, cause you talked about the, the house cleansing. Um, someone by the name of down the rabbit hole says, um, if you ladies are taking topics, I would love it if you could go over what you do in a house cleansing of a haunted house or banishing unpleasant spiritual activities. Now, that's more so for that's your lane, too, because I don't know anything about house cleansings and stuff like that outside of my own. But I know for a minute it was something that you actually did was go around and do house cleansings for people. Yeah, we, we still do just not as often as we used to. Um, it, and that's that's a hard question to answer because it does it's different for how, each house. You know, it. okay, the basic thing is the first thing we'll do is we'll come in and we'll inspect the house to see if there's actually anything there. Uh-huh. And we don't use the cameras and all that that you see on Ghost Hunters. We use ourselves. <laughs> and, you know, we go in and we fill it out and figure out what is where, how many is there, and where they're coming from. And then we'll go and we'll actually bubble the house to block them in to make bubble sure. Bubble the house. Bubble the house so that they don't jump next door and come back after we're gone. So how do you do a bubble? How do you bubble the house? We have a type of ritual that we do that's kind of similar to circle casting and and ritual. Mm -hmm. But it's something that we do. And I put out a mixture of sulfur and salt Mm -hmm. around the home to bubble the house. And it literally will trap them within. They won't pass out. Uh And then we'll go. So you trap them inside of the house. We trap them inside the house. And then banish them. And then we go banish them. And then we close up the, I guess you would call them portals that they're coming from. Uh I think portals sound so sci-fi, but what else are you going to call them? Black holes? Uh We find those and we close those up so they can't come back out again. So how do you recognize a portal? Like how can you tell where they are? It For me, it feels like a suction. Like, I can feel it as a suction. And I think Junior, it's more like a cold space. Like, way colder than any other part of the area. Mm-hmm. And I, it's, it's different for, I guess, everybody. Because it's different for me and him. I feel like I'm being sucked in. Like a big old vacuum. Mm-hmm. So I can feel it. And then after we banish them out, close up the hose or whatever you want to call it. Then we go do and get rid. We go through and get rid of the residue because there's still an energy residue left. Mm. And then we go through and we cleanse that out. And you can just you feel it when you go into a house that's actually haunted and being messed with. You feel the difference when we're done. And then we go out and then we yeah, pop the bubble, if you will. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> we don't actually pop it. We retrace our steps and, and undo it. Sometimes I'll leave trinkets of things to make people feel better, but usually nine times out of ten they feel better almost immediately after we start closing up the holes. Cool. Okay. So it just depends on, like I said, we've gone in places and it wasn't haunted. The people there were so negative, that's what they were feeling. Right. You know, and then we've gone to places where I told you about that one where I I didn't think we were going to be able to do it. It was such a negative, strong everybody's sage sticks went up in flames. It looked like they were all holding torches and it like literally felt like it was windy. It was insane. And finally I just grabbed my knife and I just screamed at the top of my lungs and I slashed it into the ground and it stopped. And then uh, I feel like if, if you just feel like it's like haunted in your house and it's just like so much, if, if you're just a, a, a normal if negative is just your normal point of view or your normal perspective and you're just like a negative person, <laughs> then you're going to, no house cleanses, uh, you it's can not, do all the house cleanses yeah. in the world. It's going to stay that way at all times. You have to change your your mind frame. You have to change your way of thinking. You have to change your attitude yeah. in order to get rid of certain things. And then sometimes you have to ignore it. Like I had this one little kid 
that used to, he's a spirit. He used to just run around my house, just causing havoc, just knocking shit off the walls. Mm-hmm. And I, no matter, no amount of mm-hmm. staging, no Palo Santo, he used to, I'd be sleep on my sofa, minding my own damn business, in my own damn house. <laughs> sleep. And this little bitch will walk up to me and push me. Like, I'd be sleep. <laughs> and he'll just push me. And I cussed his ass out good one time. And then from that day on, I just started ignoring him. And he went away. Sometimes you have to ignore it. Sometimes that does work. And then you got to wonder, is it, like, for you, you're, you know, you're like a magnet for spirits. But for other Mm -hmm. people who are not magnets with spirits, what opening do you have in your home? Right. You see, there's a difference there. Mm -hmm. Junior is a magnet. So they're yeah. always going to come, but when he moves yeah, out. We was in the car. We was minding our own business. And they were just all around the car just because mm-hmm. he was in the car. Yeah, he, he drove home one day. He said, I had took a wrong turn and I got lost. And because he came in, I looked out the window. There was three sitting in his car. He got out of his they car. They were sitting on the back of the hood. When we was in the, well, they were sitting on the trunk when we was in the car. I'm like, Junior, why would you bring them home? He's like, he's like, I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know what to do. I was like, we got to get rid of them. They can't come in. I did not like them, and they did not want to look at me. See, normally, I've had them get right in my face, you know, and but they would not look at me, and that right there really irks me. Like, okay, you don't want to look at me? Right. What, yeah. are, you, what are you trying to do? But for people who, you know, have kids, I think we really have to protect our kids from things like that. Yeah. Because if there's, an, if there's an opening, there's always a chance of something not nice coming in. Exactly. And you, exactly. you may have bought a house or moved somewhere into a new apartment and maybe you're not a negative person and maybe you're not haunted, but the people who were there before were very negative and their energy is ca- captured in that place. Mm-hmm. And all you need is... They, a- they, have to, they have to have energy in order to manifest. There's no energy, but there's energy all the... There's energy within everything. Mm-hmm. It's just what type of energy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And you remember the dog and the guy that we had here mm-hmm. messing with my, my jaybird? Yeah, I mean, it's just, you. it's different. That's why it's hard to answer those questions because it's different per person. And I'll tell people, message me on Facebook so I can get more information from them of what they're going through to see what I can do the best I can. But it's really hard to do when I'm not there. Okay, I have another one. I'll do one more. And I'm sorry, I'm saying you guys' name because, I mean, it's not like you're anonymous. You're in the comments. So, But if you don't want us to say your name, just let us know. Um but here is one from Brandy Zeller. She says, what are your thoughts on getting messages from deities you don't work with and how do you deal with it? Example, having Papa Legba show up in a dream and give you a message and you've never worked with the Loa. Well, you you know about mm-hmm. that. Um, but again, I'm queen procrastinator. Um... Getting messages from deities that you don't work with. I experienced that a lot. Um, I can't really say that I don't. Sometimes they show up because you're supposed to work with them. Or they want you to work with them. Or they're just trying to get your attention. I am a firm believer, even though I don't practice what I preach. I will say that this is going to be a very hypocritical statement coming from me. Um... I don't believe that deities show up unless they are trying to get your attention. They're not just just for the hell of it. Just to say, hey, what's up? How you doing? What you eating? They, <laughs> they're there for a purpose. <laughs> they're there for a purpose. So I think you should really um, pay attention to signs and, and, and things like that that you get from deities. Look into it. Sometimes they it does. Sometimes they're there as a warning. There, there is a warning before the storm. So just pay attention to any signs that you get. I'm really bad at that though. Like I'll get signs and I'll get messages and things like that, and I just be like, "Hey, tequila, such and such and such and such happened," and she be like, "Well, duh, da 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 da." And I'm like, "Huh, okay. Well, one of these days, I'll." Because right now, I've been not ignoring one on purpose, but he's been kind of very prominent. Uh, past couple of weeks, I just been like, okay, I'll get to it eventually, or I'll get to you eventually, and yeah, but you wanna you wanna pay attention as soon as possible because sometimes you can piss them off by ignoring them, mm-hmm. and I've done that too, and damn, they had my house, uh, my apartment, that whole wall, damn, it set on fire, <laughs> but 
Yeah, I'm. A, I'm. A, I believe that you should. If they're there, they're there for a purpose. They're not just there the the because they they think you're really cool and they want to hang out with you. I mean, you are really cool, and we should all want to hang out with you. But <laughs> that's normally not the case. There, you should definitely look into it. Yeah, I agree with that. And it's nice to have people to pop those things off from. You know, like we'll call each other and, you know, and there's some really good groups and then there's some really bad groups to do that with. <laughs> I don't want to refer anybody to any groups. I really don't. But I, I think if you get a sign on anything, you should pay attention to it. Yes. I really yes. do. Because signs are there for a reason. And that's, that's something that I really should to take heed to too. I'm mad about it too, so I mean, I'm, I'm bad about it too, so I'm probably not the one to listen to, but definitely if you can, if you can help it, don't ignore it. Yeah, don't ignore it. Yeah. Miss Cause even some of the Wednesday what they call Adams. Things, I know, but you know, sleep and Netflix and YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Done with you. Yeah, but um, yeah, definitely, definitely pay attention because you don't want one of them getting pissed off at you. No, no, you don't. I, I eventually get to it. Like when I can tell, they finna be like, okay, now nah, I done told you once, I done told you twice, now and, I'm gonna show my ass. And there goes I your usually, altar cloth and flame. Right. So usually I'll get to it right before they show their ass and be like, no, see, I was listening. I heard you. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Was there any more? Uh, I have to look for the stats on this thing because it keeps going to sleep. Because you keep talking. Uh, I think no, I'm going to sleep in like two seconds. I need to, I think it's overall my setting. I got mine on a minute. Um, I can never look at a squirrel normally after this. Stop it. Stop. <laughs> I, just, I just love the fact that you got bashed for the snakes, and I did not get bashed for zombie what the squirrels. What was that all about? <laughs> I thought it was hilarious. She literally said squirrels are going to eat our face, and I got chewed out about what am I doing? Um, let's see. Vicky Sheree. If she got. Was she doing your argument? And it's there, like, to I don't get that one. Um, how long? Okay, we. we we talked about that one in the last video. Somebody wants a recipe for your fried dandelions. With, oh, you know, I can, with I can the make cat a, and the doggy pee pee on it. I can make a video because I have a bunch of them sprouting up now. So once I get enough to fry them, I will do a video. I never succeeded with squirrels or threatened to listening to this. Great. Now just convert the whole goddamn world, why don't you? <laughs> no, I'm not a Jehovah Witness. <laughs> um, let's see. Thank you, Saint Brenda. Don't be picking on my squirrels. Thank you. It's her totem. It's one of her totem animals. <laughs> see, fuck her up, Brenda. Um, Brenda's see. too nice. She's gonna be nice to me anyway. <laughs> she is so adorable. I was looking at her videos. I was like, she's just too cute. <laughs> I love simply Brenda. And she pops up. I'm like Brenda. Like I don't know. It's just something about her energy. Whenever she pops up, she just makes me feel all warm and fuzzy. Yep. No, no, no. Um, I think that is pretty much it everybody's going on and on about these squirrels outlaw squirrels like what yeah. oh, great. Have to stop. i think in the last two videos that we've done we've covered a lot but just like any other videos if you have any topics that you want us to talk about then add them here i did a couple videos today so a couple of the topics are in that video and the other video and i'm gonna get those on they'll be posted before you see this <laughs> so the um... Somebody told me that those trees that I was talking about, the male and the female, is the ginkgo boba 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 tree. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's it. There's, we didn't get too many suggestions or questions in this video because everybody was too stuck on these hypothetically killer squirrels. You'll see. No, we won't. We won't see. <laughs> You'll see. I can go back and check the other video. Let's see. Um. Blood magic. Let's see. Okay. Um, um. Radio silence. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't even want to look through these, through these, because that's when I was, you know, I 
you know, having my little back and forth, and it's starting to bring up yeah. bad memories. Let's not. Yeah, let's move on. Because we've moved on from her. <laughs> yeah. Let's see up front. Nope, that's it. Okay, well, that's good. Then we will end here, I guess. Somebody said, okay, somebody said something about a shit demon. What? Bel- Belfagor, his name is the horned one, and he said Belfagor is a shit demon. Oh, I'm I sorry. I don't know. And you know me, I said literally. <laughs> that might be a personal opinion. That might be somebody's demon that they're working with. I don't know. Oh my goodness. I don't uh, know. That might be off of some kind of Xbox game. I have no idea. Okay. So, yeah, I think we've pretty much, yeah. So, guys, drop a comment down below if you want us to discuss something. If you want to remain anonymous, let us know. I don't see how because, you know, your name is at the comment. But Somebody messaged yeah. me and didn't want us to say her name, and I didn't write the topic down that she wanted us to talk about but i'll look back through my messages on facebook tomorrow and make a new list because i wrote i marked okay. a lot off if you want to rename rename if you want to remain anonymous send your question to tequila's facebook inbox yes because my yeah. facebook is open to everybody so yeah if you don't care about being anonymous drop your comment or your question down in the comments and we will be saying your name and I think with that, the reason that I'm, I want to say your names, if you want them said in the comments, if you leave your com- if you leave your question in the comment, we're probably going to say your name, and that makes it easier for people to go back in the comments if they have their if they want to give you their input on it as well. They could easily find the comment. Yes, and keep it civilized, people. Please, keep don't it nobody civilized. get the cuss but me. No, we should all cuss. I like to cuss. Everybody cuss. Uh, cussing is one thing, but going back to our comments from our subscribers and telling them they're wrong is another thing so cussing is i mean come on we all do it don't cuss nobody out though don't do that no you if you want to share and express your opinion your experiences that's fine but other than that (laughs) (laughs) there was only one time that somebody was called a name that i agreed with other than that don't want to do it (laughs) shit was so funny oh my goodness (laughs) all right Oh Lord, she's getting she's getting hysterical. She needs food. She needs sleep. <laughs> All right, guys, we're gonna end here, and we will be back next week for another topic. Thank y'all yeah. so much for watching. Oh no, thank you so much for listening. Yeah, and I was gonna say something, but I just couldn't get it out. So. Yeah, Yeah, that didn't sound like it was right. (laughs) All right, guys. We'll talk to y'all next week. Blessings. Bye, y'all.